ಶಿವಂ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದ್ಯುತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ಸದೌ ಪಶ್ಚಾ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ಮನುಜಕೈ ಪುನೈತ ಬಹದ್ಭಿಗಿರ್ವಿನೈ ಗಿರೀಶ ಪರಮೇಶ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಭೃತಿ ಸ ಭಕ್ತೇವ್ಯ ಸುಧಾಂ ನಿಜ ಬಾಜನ ಮೂಜ್ರಮುಪದೀಶಾನ್ ಸಚ್ಚೈತನ್ನ ಕಿಮೈ ಪುನಾರಭಿಶೋಯಾಶತಿಪದ ನಿಂದಂಥ ಪುಲಕೋತ್ಖರೇನ ವಿಕಸ ನಿಪ್ರಸನಷ್ಟೀ ಪ್ರೋದ್ವಿಕೃತ ಭೂಜದ್ವಯ ಹರಿಹರಿ ಇತುಚೈವ ದಂತ ಮುಹು ನೃತ್ಯಂತ ದ್ಯುತಮಸ್ವಿ ನಿರ್ಜರ ಚೈ ಸಿಂಚಂತ ಊರ್ವೀತಲ ಗಾಯಂಥ ನೀಜ ಪರಸದಾಯ ಪರಿವೃತ ಶ್ರೀಗೌರಚಂದ್ರ ನಮಸ್ಪರ್ಶದೈ ಪರಿವೃತ ಶ್ರೀಗೌರಚಂದ್ರ ನಮ ಮೋಹನ್ ಸಚ್ ಪರ್ಷದ ಜಗದನಂದ ಪಂಡಿತ್ ಮರುಸುರನ್ ಮರ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ Yes, to the house or the place, place, not house, but place of Jagadananda Pandit. Well, Maharaj, it is, very, it is very near Maharaj, but we will need oh. to have a little kirtan to go there. And, mm-hmm. and at least to here we can't get lost, but our devotees, <laughs> maybe somebody can. Anyhow, yes. Maharaj. We'll find all, a way. I, they'll find a way <laughs> jai shri vakti sri go sami maharaj ki jai and jai oh, all of our upanu guru vaga ki jai go shri guru dev ki jai shri guru maharaj ki jai jai shri vakti siddhant saraswati tako ki jai and our upanu oh, guru vaga ki jai maharaj oh. we're very happy to be with you and the many devotees who see the recorded as well as the live version giving so much appreciation so much just slip that in so that we are with many good souls and we are very happy to go in kirtan with sankirtan from our tri chaitanya sarasat ma tri shinitai chaitanya dev taking their permission and going i think you've got a kirtan group with paramananda prabhu and uh, you have a madanga player and cartel player we can have one mahaman one panchatatva yes here we are one panchatatva maha mantra and then hare krishna maha mantra too and then let us come up the road we'll come out of our temple at left left turn out of our temple come to the end of the that small road then turn right oh exactly this is the right direction very good not oh. getting lost here hmm. then at the end turn right and then we will uh, come up the hill past the little market and then just going up the hill we'll to take a small road on the left and we'll join again there so let's chant kirtan up, up until then shiv is not a tanna prabhu nityananda ಯಾದೈತ ಗರಧ ಶಿವ ಸಾಧಿ ಗೋರ್ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ
Haribo, Haribo, Nitai Go, Haribo. Okay, we did not get lost. Very good. We are at the Sri Girid Hari Mat. Even without saying the name of the temple, we've arrived there safely. So we're at Sri Girid Hari Mat. We're just on the right hand side, one of the very first places going up that little road. And this is the place of Jagarananda Pandit. So, Maharaj asked, I just say a few words to start us on our pilgrimage today. So, when, when we come in here, first thing I can say is the devotees come inside and here we always get a, just a very sweet reception from the pujaris, from the priests who are there. And really, I mean, this is so much appreciated by the, the devotees, seeing the, like, the Vaishnava etiquette and nothing judgmental, us Westerners are coming into their like, very Indian little temple. But they're very humble and always very kind and sweet. And this is the place of Jagarananda Pandit, who was very humble and very kind and sweet. And Jagarananda Pandit, he always wanted the best for Mahaprabhu. And there are various leelas which take place. Okay, here's a picture, a photograph on the screen now of uh, Jagarananda Pandit and the, the uh, very aromatic and very good quality oil that he brought for Mahaprabhu because he wants to give some relief for the all the austerities that Mahaprabhu is going through. He wants to rub it on his head to keep him uh, cool, to cool headed, etc. And he brought all the way from Navadeep and not only that, it is a difficult oil to prepare. We get all this news from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And then he comes and then I do believe through Govinda that he uh, wanted that Mahaprabhu will accept this oil. But when Govinda offered to Mahaprabhu, then Mahaprabhu, he dismissed more or less straight away. And then next, ti next time when Jagrananda, maybe the next day, came in to see Jag uh, to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Jagarananda, what is this? You are sending me this very rich perfumed oil. What are people going to think if I use such an oil? You want me to be an enjoying, one of these enjoying sannyasis like that? And Jagarananda Pandit in his uh, special mood then replied to Mahaprabhu, what oil? What oil? And then Mahaprabhu perhaps indicated, oh, this oil in the corner. <laughs> and then he took that earthen pot, no doubt it was, and he broke it, smashed, took it out, mm, smashed it and had done with it. And then he just locked himself in his room and then wouldn't come out to eat, whatever it may be. Mahaprabhu, after some days, he's coming to Jagrananda and saying, I, please, you must come out now, break your fast, don't be unhappy. If you don't come out, if you don't eat, I won't eat. So you have to come out. And Jagarananda, then understanding Mahaprabhu will fast because of his austerities, because of him fasting, then he came out and Mahaprabhu asked him not only to eat, but he said, I want to have the food cooked by you. And then Jagarananda came out cooked the, some meal and then when Mahaprabhu tasted that he said oh such nectar even when you are angry Jagarananda your prashad is the best ever and so anyhow in these this and several dealings with Jagarananda we see how it pained Jagarananda that Mahaprabhu was having any austerities uh, lying on the floor also with, uh, without any mattress, without anything soft there. Various incidents took place. And we are told from Chaitanya Charitamrita too, that Jagarananda was one of the principal um, uh, personal associates, branches of Mahaprabhu's, the tree of Mahaprabhu, as it were. So he was one of the principal uh, branches of that tree. And that in Krishna Leela, he is Satyabhama, who always is looking out for the the uh, comfort and of uh, Lord Krishna. So many things took place here. It is known as the Giridhari Mat, and it's one of one of so many actually places so close to our temple. Um, again, the 
kind of wealth of the original places of Mahaprabhu and Mahaprabhu's Parshads. And Parshad is not a small word, okay, it's two syllables, whatever it may be, but it is not a small wor word in the sense. Parshad means eternal associate coming from the upper world and the two rooms of the upper world of Mahaprabhu and of Krishna coming here to this plane as the associates of Mahaprabhu for his Leela. And Jagarananda Pandit, he was Jagarananda Pandit also, greatly learned, great Pandit, all these qualities. And he was a constant companion of Mahaprabhu and throughout his Leela in Puri, then he is there constantly. And after Mahaprabhu's disappearance, we know of, or I know of, only one book that he wrote, which was the Prema Vivata. And that Prema Vivata was greatly glorified by Srila Gurudev, greatly glorified by Srila Guru Maharaj. And that Prema Vivata book is like the one book of, the, like the close associate of Mahaprabhu, presenting what was, who was Mahaprabhu and his teachings, the glories of the holy name that Mahaprabhu came to give. And many things are there. And one, I mean, many things are there. And he's saying in that book, one of the things that I remember, if you want the association of Mahaprabhu, you must give up lust, you must give up the selfish need, any selfish need, if you want the association of Mahaprabhu. This came through Jagarananda in that book. And Jagarananda Pandit, he always had a desire to go to Vrindavan. And Mahaprabhu wouldn't let him go to, to Vrindavan. He's obviously coming to Mahaprabhu for permission. And then one time, then after so much asking, then I said, okay. Jagarananda, you go to um, Vrindavan, but when you go to Vrindavan, you go directly to Rup Sanatan, directly to them, and don't leave their, moment, their association for a moment. And he also gave another two specific instructions that don't uh, closely associate with the Brajabastis, don't do what they do, keep aloof from them, we do not know who they are, so don't mix with the Brajabasis, don't imitate the Brajabasis. And then the third instruction was not to go, go up onto Govardhan Hill, not to put your feet onto Govardhan Hill. So when Jagarananda went to Vrindavan, then of course he followed all those directives to the letter that Mahaprabhu had given to him. But while in Vrindavan, he was lamenting about, oh, what have I done? I've left Mahaprabhu's association to come here. I'm so foolish. I need to come back to Puri as soon as possible. And then due course, that separation. But he had that association and kept the association of Rupa Sanatana in Vrindavan. Then presently he comes back to Mahaprabhu and saying, oh, I was so foolish. But this way you purified me of my foolishness, something like this. But this is all Leela, there is no impurity in Jagarananda. And in Jagarananda too, we see what a supreme Parshad devotee he is, and how Mahaprabhu is teaching us all through his devotees. So we must be very careful about everything to do with Krishna consciousness. Our going to the holy dams, our parakram is in Puri also. All of these things we must be very careful. And Maharaj, on this road, there are other places, and including uh, the Bhajan Kuchi, the place where Raghunath Das Goswami also uh, stayed, and uh, that was his Bhajan Kuchi, and many places, all in a, in a, short, uh, a short, small area. I don't know, Maharaj, if you like to visit these places, or we are now almost opposite to uh, the Samadhi Mandir of Haridas Thakur. And Maharaj, you tell me, I'm happy to try not to get the devotees lost between A and B on the way to C, <laughs> D, E, F, G. Hare Krishna. Um, I think, I mean, it would be most appropriate to 
sing the glories of the Nama Charja Stila Haridas Thakur and all the great Vaishnavas, they will be pleased with that. Wonderful. And we are right there, Maharaj. So perhaps we can have two Mahamantras and let's give our obeisances to Radha Giridhariju there in the Giridhari Mat, to Jagarananda in remembrance of Jagarananda. And let us come out from the mat. We're going to turn left and we're going to just cross the little the road that we just come up, let's go straight across this time. And just, we are a hundred meters, I think we can say, approximately, to the entrance from the Giridhari mat to the actual entrance, the temple entrance of Haridas Thakur Samadhi. So being so near, let us chant two Mahamantras and let us be in the Samadhi, at the Samadhi Mandir of Srila Haridas Thakur. <laughs> Now we're coming into the temple, obviously leaving our slippers outside if anybody's wearing shoes on the parakama and clean our feet, come <laughs> into the temple and Maharaj will come in and as we go straight in, straight ahead of us are the deities, I believe, of the deity, I believe, of Mahaprabhu, but very prominently on the left side is the samadhi of the actual samadhi of Haridas Thakur. And this, Maharaj, I think here we can give our obeisances, do one parakrama, give a little donation in the box and let us be seated here. And we'll put a little Vyasa san, a nice Vyasa san for you, Maharaj, pillow, somebody with a fan to fan you. And Maharaj, let us humbly ask you <laughs> to <laughs> mention about where we are and the glories of Haridas Thakur. Hey, Krishna. Haridas Thakur ki jai. And also, Maharaj, it may be a little hot if someone can also fan him. <laughs> He's outdoors there. It looks like a nice day. He's in the, the, the perhaps one of the gardens nearby. <laughs> right? We ah. have so many gardens as well. Transported um, by your vision, Maharaj. Yes, well, I'm saying because Mahaprabhu does go to all the we're saying Jagannath is Dwaraka, Krishna. But outside of the Jagannath temple, so many gardens that Mahaprabhu took to be Vrindavan. And we we'll say something about that later. But what we want to say is that, and nearby, Maharaj can correct me if I'm wrong, was also the Bhakti Kutir of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So, I had the opportunity to go, as I mentioned in the beginning, that was in, um, uh, the, say, September of 1974. And at that time, really, just on the beach in the sands was this very, very small, like, kutir cottage samadhi type stuff with a little slatted fence around it. Like... Very small and intimate. And, you know, you would be thought that is the Samadhi of Haridas Thakur. There's, you have to remember, because of uh, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, it's promulgated by Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, so many people from all over the world came to these holy places and also revived the the um, Indian people, right? Because we would hear Bharata Bhumi Te Hoyla Manusha Janma Jar Janma Sartak Pari Paru Upakar Mahaprabhu saying Bharata Bhumi Te those born have the Sukriti to spring out of the soil of Bharat Barsha, India they should 
promote Krishna consciousness. That's what he's saying. So Srila Prabhupada, Swami Maharaj, his idea was that to, to revive Krishna consciousness within India, if, if I bring foreigners, because they're so, like Saraswati Thakur said, according to growers, Western civilization, crush it. Right? We know the famous line when they asked Mahatma Gandhi, what do you think about Western civilization? He said, I think it would be a good idea. Right? So Saraswati Thakur saying, seeing them mad, being seduced by the West, Western civilization, crush it. So Swami Maharaj Prabhupada, his idea is, if I bring the, you know, the white dancing elephants, the foreigners to India, then all the people will come to see them and they'll think, oh, while we're lost appreciating, you know, Western culture and the accompanying degradation, here are the, the children with the Nobel laureate, um, Romain Roland, he very nicely called the dissatisfied children of the spirit of the West. He said, we turn our glance back to India. We dissatisfied children of the spirit of the West. So Prabhupada, he thinks, if I bring them, then that'll inspire the Indians. They'll get excited. And we see, this as in the case of uh, Srila Guru Maharaj, after what, some 40 years, perhaps, revisiting his birthplace, Hapania, with Srila Gurudev, Krishnas Babaji Maharaj, perhaps Jajavar Maharaj, and uh, uh, Chutananda Prabhu was there at the time. So he is this boy from you know, New York City, sophisticated, super intelligent, high level of Sukriti. Otherwise, what's he doing in Hapania in 1969? with Gurudev, Guru Maharaj, Babaji Maharaj, Jajabar Maharaj. You can understand the level of his uh, Sukriti. So Amar, his name was uh, Amarendranath, Amar Babu, Guru Maharaj's next brother. Guru Maharaj the eldest, the next brother. So because of Guru Maharaj's taking sannyas in India, that means you're legally dead. You have no rights to anything. It's you're legally dead. So then whatever was coming to you passes on to the next brother. So that brother always felt indebted to Guru Maharaj because everything he got was because of Guru Maharaj being, you know, uh, being mad for the lotus feet of Gauranga Chandra. You know? So anyway, that Amar Babu, he's astonished to see this Achutananda. Like this boy from, and he's saying, we here, we're, we're born in Gauramandal, right? here in Hapania, and such places. And we do not have such appreciation. And you, you're, you know, from New York City, how do you have this appreciation? And Srila Guru Maharaj and Srila Guru, they've liked the Chutananda's answer very much. And it shows you what he, the substance he had, even at such a young age, he said, Brahmanda Brahmite Kona Bhagavan Jeev, Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhakti Lata Deev. Quote is Mahaprabhu's instructions, this Srila Rupa Goswami saying, this, this is not about location, where you're born. Brahmanda Brahmite, wandering the length and breadth of the universe, the Bhagavan Jeev, those souls who are fortunate They'll get this connection. There you go. So that was his answer. It's not a question of being born in India or New York City, but those who have this good fortune, they'll get this connection. So that was Srila Prabhupada's idea that the Westerns will revive them. So when we were there, this is before that. This is in motion, you could say. It's 1973, 74. So very simple. In the sand, the samadhi of Haridasa, you had to kind of ask around to, to find it, really. It was not, when I went again in 2000, 
what is described? This big temple, deity, uh, Anat Mandir, so many things. But at that time, very simple. But what was there from the Bhakti Kuti of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur was he wrote some poetry in English. We know besides the many things he wrote in Sanskrit and Bengali, sometimes he'd write something, uh, poetry in English. And he wrote this, he wrote, for the Samadhi, specifically for the Samadhi of Haridas Thakur. He reasons ill who tells that Vaishnavas die, for thou art living still in sound. For Vaishnavas uh, die to live. Like Guru Maharaj is always saying, die. He said, for Vaishnavas die to live and in living try to spread the holy name around. That's what he composed for Srila Haridas Thakur. And we know he's known as the Nama Charja. So he's taking his daily practice, three lakhs of Krishna Nam, 300,000 names. That means approximately 192 rounds. Right? That's what he does every day at the Siddha Boku. And we know even before the appearance of Mahaprabhu, that Advaita, Charge, and Haridas Thakur, they're doing Nam San Kirtan in anticipation of his appearance. So we hear of that, and Haridas Thakur makes reference to it in his final pastimes with Mahaprabhu that, like, I'm so fallen, you know, and born as an outcast, and, right, uh, and a family of, um, um, Muslims, he says that, and we're told, like, remember, as he's Brahma Haridas, sometimes referred to in that way, he stole the cows of Krishna. So we know in certain places, like cattle rustling, you know, that's a major offense to the cowboys, stealing cows. You know, and what to speak of the supreme cowboy, Krishna. And it's friends. So you stole their calves and cows. So for that offense, and see how every offense and punishment is a boon or a benediction. Welcome to the Krishna consciousness movement. So he's saying, for that offense, then you'll be born in this low family outcast, you know, in the worst possible. So you'll have to take that birth. And from that position, what, what is he known as? The Nama Charja. Of the chanting of the Mahaprabhu's Kali Kale Nama Rupe Krishna Avatar, Krishna Varnam Tusha Krishna Sango Pangasta Parshadam. Everything is about Krishna Nam and the distribution of Krishna Nam. And who's the, the, the crest jewel of the devotees? That Hari Das Thakur. And we see this consistently in the pastimes of Mahaprabhu. His Ragamark Diksha Guru, who is Ramananda, he's a Grihasta, technically Shudra. Kiba Bipra, Kiba Nyasi, Shudra, Kene Noi Jay, Krishna Tattva Veta, Se Guru Hoi. But he knows Krishna Tattva, the truth, the ultimate truth about Krishna, science of Krishna. So he's Guru, Ramananda. Rup and Sanatan, Ranatas, they're technically uh, disqualified socially, right? And so many, you see, that, that he's using uh, uh, as um, 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 either a mouthpiece or shining a spotlight on them, showing like there's hope for those outside of this system. That is the point I mean to make. If we think, no, it's always, yes, they are the most exalted, but they're appearing in social situations where they're disqualified from participation. As we told, Rup, Sanatan, Haridas Thakur, not entering the temple. So in, in a way, it's giving some hope, some inspiration, some encouragement to us. And so that Haridas Thakur, we're told, when Advaita Charja, it was time to do his shrad ceremony for a departed uh, father, ancestor, at the conclusion, you, you should, the, the first prasadam should be given to the most qualified Brahmin. That's who you should go to first. 
What does Advaita Acharya do? He goes to Haridas Thakur and, and offers to him. Haridas Thakur, and we see repeatedly in the past times of Mahaprabhu, whenever he's put in a situation where any kind of honor or pratishta is to be uh, given to him, he's running away from that. Somehow Advaita forced that situation much to the chagrin or the embarrassment of Haridas Thakur. He's saying, I'm, what are you doing? I'm the most unfit, the most fallen, the most disqualified. But it's Advaita Charja. So his divine will imposed in that situation. But, uh, and uh, Advaita and Niti, uh, Haridas and Nityananda and so many pastimes. But we're told that um, uh, one where he lived previously, uh, what was it called? Benapol, something like that. That those in positions of power, they feel threatened by pure devotion. It's interesting. <laughs> They're holding some power, but if they hear there is someone who is a genuine devotee or Shuddha Bhakta or inspirational, they, they feel threatened by that for some reason. <laughs> it's a peculiar thing. <clears throat> we say, you know, Indra, that's special. It's all Leela. Again, why these things are there? To shine a spotlight on the devotion of a particular devotee. So we're told this local king, he's the renown of Haridas Thakur is increasing. So he has courtesans or you know, prostitutes in his service. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. So as long as she's quiet, that's just paper quiet. So you see, there's no oh, association of devotees. And <laughs> so he sends this one prostitute to descend Haridas Thakur. And he's thinking, so many of these so-called Paramahangsas, it's all a show. Send one girl like this, matter solved. And we're told she goes there, uh, Haridas Thakur doing his three lakhs of Krishna Nam as he does. And um, she's saying, you know, I find you, you know, irresistibly charming. And, uh, and you say, um, was, you know, suggestive to him. And Haridas Thakur saying, I will gladly fulfill your inner heart's desire but I must complete my, you know, it's called sam, Sankhya Nam. Sankhya means counting. Okay. When I finish, then what do your heart really desires? That will be fulfilled. She's so saying, oh. And then chanting all night, she's falling asleep, comes back the next day, same situation, two nights. But all the night, when she's there, she's hearing the Shuddha Nam of Haridas Thakur, which we can't imagine. But that's the vibration she's hearing, the Premic Nam Kirtan of Haridas Thakur. Right. Two nights, three nights. The third night, she's uh, utterly converted by him. Right. And then reveals the plot of this envious king and explains the situation. And Haridas Thakur is like, I understand these things. <laughs> He's also a great philosopher, um, thinker. And he knows everything, but he knows the power of Shudhanam and Krishnanam. And we he initiates her, she becomes a Vaishnavi, and she's then taking Ten lakh Krishna Nam becomes a premic devotee, etc. Hare Krishna. So, but the, re the reason I mentioned this, everyone knows that, but when we study the pastimes of Srila Haridas Thakur, 
we find almost the identical pastime occurs again. Why? It's almost identical. One explanation is this, that someone could think, oh, uh, he could overcome the, the seductive attraction of that lady. Well, what about Maya Devi herself? What if Maya Devi herself came? Could he pass that test? And not only that, you say Brahma Haridas? <laughs> We see Brahma didn't do so well in the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Bach, you know, there's this, and again, it's Leela. Like Guru said, Madhva could not accommodate the charge of Kabisa, Mahaprabhu could. But we see in the third canto of Bhagavatam, there's some pastimes of Brahma being seduced by Maya, right? So he's Brahma Haridas. So he passed this test, you could say, with a woman of this world. But what if Maya Devi herself came? And previously he did not, right? So, and we're seeing here some, something uh, uh, unique about the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Maya Devi comes in a similar way. And it, what does it say? One line there is said, exhibiting feminine postures that would bewilder the mind of Brahma, but not Haridas Thakur. So Haridas Thakur, that is a higher position than being Brahma of a universe. Haridas Thakur is not Brahma generally represents karma misra bhakti, if we're following the uh, account uh, or the sequence of Srila Sanatana Goswami Prabhu and the Briyad Bhagavatam right. So as Haridas Thakur, he converts Maya Devi. Right. And she says that uh, previously, I received Ram Nam from Mahadev Shiva. She said, but Ram Nam gives Mukti, but Krishna Nam gives Prem. So I've come to you to get Krishna Prem, Krishna Nam. And if you'd be so merciful as to. So just think about when we think of like the power of different gurus, like we're talking, we'll hear about Parmananda Puri. I think Madhavendra Puri, who were his disciples? Advaita, Charja, Nityananda Prabhu, Parmananda Puri, Ishwara Puri, I think Ranga Puri, who? Oh, Pre, uh, Pundarik Vidyanidhi, who? Ranga Puri. Ranga Puri, like, yeah, so these are his disciples. Right? That's inconceivable. But also, if we think of this, like, Haridas Thakur, he converts Maya, such as his power. Right. So, uh, and that Haridas Thakur, so humble. Whenever Mahaprabhu tries to bring him to the inner group, he stays off in the distance. Right. And we know he's staying by Siddhabokul, and Mahaprabhu comes every day. Govinda, one of the, they bring Mahaprabhu's prasad to Haridas Thakur every day. That's amazing. Right? Maybe had some of that prasad cooked by Jagadananda Pandit. <laughs> and Guru Bhai said, like, he was, you could say, you know, hot. Jagadananda Pandit, he said, maybe some of that went into the prasad, that mood. <laughs> But anyway, so Haridas Thakur, and there with Rupa Goswami, imagine Rupa Goswami is writing Vidagda Madhava, Lalita Madhava, sometimes Sanatana Goswami Prabhu, Das Goswami, Haridas Thakur taking Krishna Nam, Mahaprabhu always visiting, and Mahaprabhu uh, uh, gets word that Haridas, because the prasad when it's being delivered one day, Govinda is saying, uh, uh, 
seeing Haridas not looking well. And Haridas said, oh, I, I can't complete my Sankhya, not my counting. You know, I have a vow to count a certain amount. I can't do it. And my vow also is that until I complete that, I don't take prasad. But here you brought prasad, and it's not just anything. Prasad from Mahaprabhu, how can I, there'll be a fault upon me if I don't honor the prasadam. So his solution, to take a little bit of that prasadam. Then Govinda is telling Mahabharu, Haridas, not looking well, feeling well. This is his situation. Mahaprabhu comes and said, Haridas, how are you? And he's saying, my body is all right, but my mind and heart are not good. I can't complete my rounds, my assigned number. Mahaprabhu is saying, you're old. You can chant less. And, all, and what to speak of, I mean, he's just, that's from an external point of view. He's saying, you know, you have Krishna Prem. So why are you talking like this? And then Haridas Thakur says, actually, that's not really what I wanted to talk to you about. But I feel that soon you're going to wind up your pastimes in this world. As we Gurmars will say along the lines of Bahiranga Sange Kori Nama Sankirtan, the public service of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Nam San Kirtan, distribution of Krishna Nam. Uh -huh. And because remember, whoever sees him when he has these kirtans, they become infused with Krishna Prem. But Antaranga Sange Kori Rasa Ashvadan. With, his, with Ramananda and Srup Damodar in the Gangbir behind closed doors, he's relishing rasa. Right? And in the end, you know, 24 hours a day, those last 12 years hardly coming out. That's for these, the, you know, the, remember, Shesh Leela divided into Madhya and Antya, the Antya Leela part. So, and he is aware Mahaprabhu got released from Advaita Charja with his mystic poem saying like, the marketplace for what you're distributing is saturated. Vishwa Gaurasa Magnam, the whole universe is inundated. Ek Bindu Jagat Dubai. You're now free to pursue, so growing saying public service and uh, private life. And he's been resisting all along the, how uh, difficult it is to maintain his composure and resist going, diving deep, plunging the depths of Radhabhav. So Haridas Thakur can sense that the time for Mahaprabhu to leave is also coming. He's saying, do not show that pastime to me. So my hope is that this body will fall down in your presence. And I will, who have chanted three lakhs of Krishna Nam every day. Right? I want to, with a view of your holy lotus face, chant Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Then Mahaprabhu leaving, returning the next day with his uh, internal associates and the greater group of devotees, they come to see Haridas Thakur. They're having, they start having kirtan and Haridas Thakur is lying there uh, and asks Mahaprabhu to be seated next to him and uh, he's looking at the lotus face of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu so beautiful as Rupa Goswami says, Raso Dama Kamar Buddha Dura Dama Udvila Tanur. 10 million cupids and full blown cupidity shining in one. And he takes the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu and puts them on his chest. So he's clutching the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Dev 
and chant and looking at his lotus face and chanting Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, and leaves the world. And taking dust from all the surrounding devotees from their feet on his head, and that way he left the world. And they all observe that it was, they say, and Mahaprabhu himself, that similar to Bhishma Dev, and what they mean by that. Bhishma Dev decided when to go. It's not that he succumbed to mortality. No such thing. He, it was his will to leave at this particular time. And then Mahaprabhu, he picks up the divine form of the Nama charge, uh, Vaishnava Shiramoni Haridas Thakur, and starts singing and dancing and carrying him around in a procession and bathes him in the ocean and they make a it's described as said like an airship viman they may and they the boys carry haridas thakur back and so the oceans become a mahatirtha being bathed in the defined form of haridas thakur by mahaprabhu they bring him back, and in the sand, they make this uh, samadhi for him. They have kirtan, and we're told, I just have to say, what is there? That Mahaprabhu and the devotees, they go into the ocean afterwards, and they're swimming and playing, and they're having a joyous celebration. Like now they're bathing in that water, they, they're ecstatic. There's one level we can, the perceived sadness of this, but on another level, they're, they're now like, they're having, it's a joyful celebrate. They're mixed emotions. Like the combination of the depths of sadness and extreme uh, joy and celebration, which leads Mahaprabhu to go to the marketplace where all the vendors are. Remember, even then it's interesting, you know, Jagannath Prasad is sold for a modest. Mm -hmm. Mahaprabhu is there with like this part, the uttariya of the sannyas dress is to be held like this. It's for begging. So then you can put things in there and then take that back. So Mahaprabhu is saying, I, we're having a mahotsav for Haridas Thakur. He just left the world. Can you give some prasadam? And they're all, they see it's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They're all coming madly. To give him, he's going to be inundated. And then Srup Damodar waves them off and tells Mahaprabhu, I, I have some men. You know. <laughs> and then when they return, that's where Mahaprabhu, he garlands all the devotees and puts Chandan on their foreheads personally. And then the prasad distribution, again, Srup Damodar saying, we got this, me and my man will do the prasad distribution. So, <clears throat> Madhusudan Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Something to add? Hey, Maharaj. Look at that. Oh, that's Wonderful. some jagged prasad. Right, <laughs> wonderful. And Maharaj, very interesting. For me to hear that that was just a sandy beach when you were first there. In what year was that, Maharaj? That was in 1974. 74, yes, Maharaj. And that's what I mean by that. What um, that we will should remember from time to time. Like Guru Maharaj, they will say a thing about the Gaudiya Mat. He's saying. And I'm paraphrasing somebody saying he wasn't attracted by the architecture, <laughs> but by the spiritual substance. So when we go to the, it is beautiful and it should be done. We see the Manasiganga. I so much uh, am enamored by the beauty of Kusum Sarovar and what's been done to commemorate these places. But that's not what was. Uh, that's not what is to be seen. Remember Mahaprabhu, two rice fields, he realizes is 
Shama Kunda and Radha Kunda. He's bathing in the water of a rice field and he's in total ecstasy. So when Bhaktivinoda Thakur is revealing the Navadip Dham Mahatmyam, we later go and there's some beautiful temple built there, primarily from Gaudiya Math and or you know and others and Iskan and and we that brings so much joy to see these wonderful things. But we're to tune in on a different level about what is in this place. So when we go to see the uh, Hari Das Thakur, we want to remember what is in Charitamritam what we've heard from our Sri Guru Varga and not get overwhelmed visually by uh, architecture or um, paintings or things like that. But that said, as Gurudev reminded us that he said, in, in most places you're, you're seeing uh, a memorial built in a particular holy place said, whereas in Jagannath Puri, some of what you're seeing is exactly what, what Mahaprabhu visited. So like when that dome, the famous Jagannath dome, someone may know more detail, but my understanding, it's been there at least in its current manifestation, 800 years. So 500 years ago, Mahaprabhu, 300 years before that, and in some other forms before, but this stone. So, and you think the divine lotus eyes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu looked upon that dome. The divine vision of Srila Hari Das Thakur looked upon that dome. The eyes of Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, and all the Parshita Bhaktas of Mahaprabhu looked upon that dome. You can derive great spiritual nourishment and satisfaction looking upon this dome. Yes, Pandarasa. And I was going to say too that um, when I went there at that time in 1974 and Madhava Maharaj sort of hooked me up with the right people, you know, there are Pandas for every Sampradaya. You don't go to just any one of them. They're assigned. So Gaudiya Math has assigned Panda, who at the time name was Gopinath Kuntia. So uh, when I think about this in retrospect, because I was like um, 22 at the time, but so I every day I go to his house so, and he serves me Jagannath Prasad. I sit on the floor because you should sit on the, and they show you what to do. And he's there with a few of his attendants. And he would personally like serve me the prasadam. And then I realized later from Srila Gurudev, well, I was re first of all, Chaitanya Charitamritam, there's one, I believe his name is Kanai Kuntia. He is in the Charitamritam. Right? In one of these pastimes, I think he dressed up as Nanda Maharaj when Mahaprabhu was playing Vrindavan Leela. I mean, that's his ancestor. And this is his house. And Mahaprabhu would come to his house. <laughs> so then I realized later, that how, where I got to like take prasadam, like Gurudev was saying, yeah, that how, that's where Mahaprabhu would go and we're still going there. And Madhusudan Maharaj, he can tell of going there with Srila Gurudev himself. Ah, uh, yes, Maharaj, I mean, indeed. And going there means I was simply Gurudev chariot driver, the driver of his little, that time Padmini, we went there in the little Padmini oh, car for those who right. were interested in, like, like Paramananda, we were interested in the ancient motor cars. Uh, anyhow, we drove there and just I'm driving him. Gurudev said, Oh, we going, we need to, I need to go to the panda. So I took Gurudev and just we parked the car just outside. It's a small car. And uh, then went inside. And then we're upstairs. The living quarters are upstairs. You actually walk up the stairs, and that's the living quarters. And I think because it's cooler there, there on the mm -hmm. upper floor, probably. 
anyhow, there's a, we're, we're sitting there and then the panda, he seated Gurudev uh, nicely and I'm sitting on the floor near him. And it's just a very simple matter. That is, I was leaning against the pillar, you know, as Hare Krishnas tend to do, as we've noticed, yeah. lean against the pillar. And then I'm just sitting there and, we, and the panda went down to actually get some refreshment for Gurudev. And yeah. uh, then there's only Gurudev and myself and Gurudev said, In that pillar you're leaning against, that's the same pillar Mahaprabhu <laughs> leant against. <laughs> And honestly, Maharaj, I'm kind of, I, I mean, I probably said something really stupid, like, really? But I mean, Gurudev asserted, <laughs> I said, really, really, that's the killer. And he gave some little uh, description. And uh, perhaps it's in Chaitanya Charitamrita Maharaj, some story there where Mahaprabhu yeah. is taking a shard and at that pillar. And it's that exact same place. And I yeah. was there with Gurudev and just one of those wonderful things like you're saying those exact places it, it is kind of very inspiring for us and giving us a push a bit of a push we should take all of this very seriously it is real let us do things nicely yes it, and and it, you know i mean a, a somewhat a mundane example but the, an example nonetheless is they have in different places some, they'll call something like the hall of fame or something and you go there and whether it's for sports or um kings or whatever it is they, when they'll show you the paraphernalia of some particular person and when you see that paraphernalia somehow it's like you're connecting with that person like wow they really he wore this or sat here or did the, it, it's overwhelming to you because it's something subjective, right? Like, you know, a cup, it's just a cup. But if it was a cup, like it's the cup, the pot of Kolavetsu Sridhar, and it's all broken, it becomes of immense value, right? So when you go to these places and then you're told Mahaprabhu actually sat here, or as you say, leaned against this pillar or whatever, it's just totally overwhelming to be in the presence of such things and then you feel the in a palpable way the uh, presence or connection of that divine personality or pastime and that's one of the reasons why uh, Mahaprabhu it was the seva that he gave to Rupan Sanatan Rupta Tirtha to rediscover the holy places so when you go there, you know, we go to Kali Ahrad, which is important, right? You know, and there's the Kadamba tree, and they say, this is the Kadamba tree. Krishna would climb, take the garments to the gopis and climb this tree, you know, or leap from this tree on the Kaliya. Then some inevitably, invariably, someone will say, like, is that the original tree? You know. Uh, and Guru Maharaj has answered this. He said, Every 12 years, they change Jagannath, the deity, completely. I said, is it Jagannath? So, you know, when you have a $100 bill, we can say every so many years, they change them, right? Is it a $100 bill? It's a $100 bill. Why? Because the backing is there. So in all these places, is it the exact spot or that? That's irrelevant. We're dealing with the subjective world from an apparently objective position, but this is like where they mix and mingle in some divine and uh, inconceivable way. So I also said it reminds me of... Uh, Chernobyl, and you might say, how does it remind you of Chernobyl? That's an odd example, right? But the reason I say that, because we'll put it this way, a nuclear event happened there, I forget, what is it, 30, 40 years ago, right? But if you go there today, if you have a special instrument, it'll go, you can detect some radiation 
And so then you know, oh, those who have that ability, they say, oh, some very intense nuclear event took place here long ago. Admittedly, it's a crude example, a mundane example, but if you can understand. So we're talking about the super subjective realm, the Aprakrita of Leela of Krishna comes down in Vrindavan. Mahaprabhu comes down in Navadi Puri Vrindavan. Okay. For souls like Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Saraswati Thakur, the, the, like that, the spiritual radiation, they're still feeling it. It's very intense for them. They can't ignore it. It's not a faint signal to them. It's overwhelming. Okay. That's what they're experiencing. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur, when he'll write in the song, like when he sees, uh, you know, we go to Vidya Nagar on our Navadita Parikrama. And then we're told, and, and I believe I'm very, and happily we do this, but our capacity is very small. That's what I mean to say, not to discourage, but to encourage. Our capacity is not small. When Bhakti Vinod Thakur goes, he, when he looks up, he sees Mahaprabhu on the uh, veranda of Vidya Vachaspati. And, uh, and he's taking himself as one of the people who are there. It's live streaming Leela. And he's saying, oh, when will Mahaprabhu give up the robes of, you know, the Maharaj Vaish and come with us again at the house of Srivas Thakur? His heart is... Uh, erupting with these sort of divine sentiments. It's real, it's not poetry, it's not a fantasy. Right? That, so a personality of the stature of, of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, that's, he's having this sort of divine experience. Right? So uh, when we, so, but Mahaprabhu told Rupa and Sanatan, so, you know, uh, what's the word, excavate, you know, rediscover these holy places. And then the wealthy men come together and say, can we offer our wealth and service by building a memorial, a temple, this, that, and they do. Then everyone can come and bow down to those places and the divine uh, pastimes that took place there. But we'll see when you're, as Maharaj was telling, when you're walking down the street here, like everywhere it's divine. If you spend enough time, like we see with Keshav Ananda Prabhu and Vrindavan, like there's every, everywhere you turn, some great devotee lived there, did some pastime there, or Krishna Leela, or, you know, you're completely uh, surrounded. So if we can feel something, then imagine that, you know, on a, like on a magnitude of these pure devotees, what they feel when they are in these places. Right? It's not generic, you know, that they're having some, a generic spiritual experience or sensing that they're in a divine place. They're having very deep uh, live stream reality experiences, lila. So Guru Maharaj said like the current of the Ganga, it's moving like this. So the past time of Krishna are moving like that. He said, but if you throw a flower into that current, then it, it goes away from you. He said, but if you run along the side of that, it, it stays within vision. So the current of devotion and someone like Bhaktivinoda Thakur I'm giving as example. He's in that current of Leela eternally. And then for our benefit, extracting the, expressing this in song, then as practitioners, we, we never think that we are Raga devotees run ever. Right? Guru Maharaj said the higher devotees will never think they've achieved anartha nivritti, what to speak of anything higher or more substantial. But he's given these songs, then we can sing them, hear them, and be touched by that current. Which is 
you know, our humble attempt now by having this online parikrama is to, you know, be touched by the wave of that current, even a little bit. <laughs> How can Gurudev sit in St. Petersburg in a gazebo in Lakta and look at the, what is it? What is it? The Finnish Bay, something like that. And, and this comes to his mind. He's saying, oh, when Mahaprabhu bathed the divine form of Haridas Thakur in the ocean there, it became Mahatirtha. Then that ocean flowing into another, into another, another, then coming here. And seeing Radha, Guru, Garanga, Radha, Madhava, Sundar, this is Gurudev's divine vision. So then he's saying, is he in Lakta? Or, you know, because there's this rumor and that there was a hidden treasure in Lakta. And you see people on the beach with um, minesweepers and whatever those things are, metal detectors searching. And I used to laugh and say, the hidden treasure of Lakta is Guru Goranga Radha Madhava Sundarju, as installed by Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj. That's the hidden treasure, my dear friends. <laughs> Bhakti detector. Hmm? Bhakti detector. Bhakti. Uh-huh. Very Krishna. So, um, so, Tirti Kurbanti Tirtani Svangsaktena Gadabrita Babadviha Bhagavatas, Tirtha Bhuta, Swayam Vivo. Narada, section, early section of the Bhagavatam, he's saying, devotees like you are holy places, personified. Wherever you go, that becomes a holy place. And we see, Srila Prabhupada did that, Srila Gurudev did that, creating holy places where their holy lotus feet touched. Yes, Maharaj. So, next... Maharaj, we're... yes, we're on Pandarasta. So, we've come from the, the seashore with the Haridas Thakur Samadhi. We're on Pandarasta. We've just visited the house of the panda. If we come straight up, then to the end of the road and turn left, we'll come to Paramananda Puri's well, and where Paramananda Puri did bhajan there. So, perhaps. Perhaps we can have two Maha Mantras to take us there, Maharaj, from the right. devotee. Yes. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And I would like at this point for Parmananda Prabhu, you carry that namesake. If you could say something about the glories of Parmananda Puri and his well and as appropriate. Hare Krishna Maharaj, like you mentioned, I mean, when we go on Parikrama, this kind of events, it's a great opportunity to serve the Dhamma to serve the Lord and especially serve the devotees of the Lord by remembering their pastimes. Mm. And really it is by their grace, if we are to get anything in Krishna consciousness, it will be by the grace of the devotee. And Srila Chakavati Thakur has this line in one verse, he's saying that Karunya Drishti Samitasrita Mantu Koti, he said, just by the merciful glance Mm -hmm. That devotee, the, the substantial devotee, can absolve you of millions of sins mm -hmm. and give you prema. Mm -hmm. And really, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sees Paramananda Puri, and when he travels in South India, he meets different devotees. He met Ramananda Rai, then he continues, and he meets Ranga Puri, another disciple of Madhavendra Puri. And in one place, he's visiting a place, and really Mahaprabhu visited all the places. Yeah. And wherever he would go, he would just chant Krishna Nam and preach Nam Sankirtan, talk about Krishna. 
uh, influence everybody, inspect everybody with Prema. Yes. Krishna Nam. Yes. So he meets with Paramananda Puri, and just like Maharaj was saying, giving the Chernobyl example. And we see other examples in Chaitanya Charitamrita. One is Tanadiya Brahman, one is another Brahmachari, one Brahmin and Puri on the street. Mahaprabhu is observing him. And he comes and he says, you must have some connection with, uh, with Mother Vendra Puri. There is something, I can feel your connection. He says, yeah. yes, he is my spiritual master. <laughs> yeah. So it's Tanadiya Brahman observing certain qualities. So that radiation, because of the association of Mother Vendra Puri, they all have that intense divine radiation. So there was an immediate recognition. And immediately it is said uh, that Mahaprabhu and Paramananda Puri just spent days in Krishna Katha, mm. crying, not sleeping, continuously talking about Krishna. And at the end, Mahaprabhu he is about to continue. And then Paramananda Puri is saying, and I'm also leaving this place and I'm going to Navadvip. Mm. I wanted to take a bath in the Ganges and Mahaprabhu is saying, my sincere prayer to you. I really want to have your association. So please, after you complete the pilgrimage, after you bathe in Ganges, you come to Puri. By the time you do that, I will also be there. Ah. We're going to be there at the same time. So Paramananda Puri is saying that if I do that, then my desires will also be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So then the part are waste. And then later on, when Paramananda Puri, when Mahaprabhu is back, and Paramananda Puri, he hears from the devotees. So all the devotees from Anavadi, they're coming. Mm -hmm. And Paramananda Puri goes ahead of them. So he's ahead of the party. Yeah. So when he arrives and Mahaprabhu sees him, he proclaims, he said, now all my desires are fulfilled. Whatever austerity I did, my sannyas is fulfilled because I see Madhavendra Puri in front of me. Aye. But he's looking at Paramananda Puri. He's saying you're non different. So immediately he is offering his obeisances. And again, that's, a, that's an important point because really Mahaprabhu, he doesn't have to follow the etiquette to that yeah. degree. But we can hear from Chaitanya Charitamrita any occasion, any festival, Mahaprabhu invited to a house or somebody mm -hmm. came to offer Mahaprasa to Mahaprabhu. Paramananda Puri will get the first plate, he will be seated in a very uh, respected area, Mahaprabhu will serve him first. During Jagannath Rathayatra, he and uh, Brahmananda Bharati will be garlanded first and Mahaprabhu yeah. will put the chanting himself. Because they're also, his guru's god brothers. Yes. And also it is mentioned when there's a Gundicha Margi, all the devotees, they carrying uh, buckets of water, but only few are actually cleaning, they're, they're getting their water and cleaning. Yeah. So it's Mahaprabhu, Advaita Charya, Nityananda, Brahmananda Bharati, and Paramananda Puri. And everybody else is supplying the water. Uh -huh. So, so much respect he is showing to Paramananda Puri. And also, he is saying, when the devotees came, all the Bengal devotees came, in front of them, he is saying, Look, if you just look at Paramananda Puri, you'll get Krishna Puri. I am his. My whole existence is for him. Mm -hmm. If he wants to sell me to somebody, I have, I have to give him that permission <laughs> so he can take me and sell me to anyone. So to that degree, he is glorifying uh, Paramananda Puri. Just to inject yeah. one thing. And remember, who is Paramananda Puri and Krishna Lila? Uddhava. Uddhava. No one is more dear to me than Uddhava. That Uddhava. Uddhava Darshan. All these uh, critical points. He's there. He's Paramananda Puri and Gorlila. Yes. And also the famous past tense. So when Paramananda Puri comes to be, to be with Mahaprabhu, he is also kind of peculiar because the nature of the sannyasis at that time is to constantly travel. Mm. They're traveling everywhere. They're, they're searching for Krishna. But Paramananda Puri comes to Puri, to the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu, and he never leaves. As I said, he just stays there continuously. <laughs> so he gets the residence at the... Uh, has a mission town. Yes. It's like the little rooms for everybody. So he takes the residence over there and uh, Mahaprabhu would visit him practically daily on his way to uh, bathing in the ocean, just like Haridas Thakur. And they will have a conversation, so much change. And at some point he's asking, and he's the Supreme Personality of God. He knows everything. So this is the reason why he's asking. He's asking, Puri, is everything 
all right here. Do you need anything? Anything is, you know, have to be improved in this place that you're living in. Paramananda Puri being a perfect Vaishnava, he is not complaining, he's not saying anything, but Mahaprabhu is pushing. And then Paramananda Puri is saying, yeah, actually everything is wonderful by your grace. Just being at your lotus feet is more than I can ever desire. But Mahaprabhu keeps pushing. And then Paramananda Puri says, yeah, there's one thing. The water in this well, in the courtyard, yeah. it's not a good quality. And that is a little disturbance to me. And like right salty. A salty, yeah. maybe muddy or something. And then right in the front of the devotees, Mahaprabhu, with folded hands, he prays to the Ganges. And he asks Ganges to enter the well. And that actually happens. The next day, <laughs> when he is on the way to the ocean, he comes and says, how is your water today? <laughs> and then Paramananda Puri said, it is of excellent quality. <laughs> in fact, it's so sweet. I think it's the liquid crema that is right. filling my well. So since that moment, it became known as the well of the liquid crema. Mm -hmm. And so many pastimes are there, Maharaj, and it happened there. And when I was in, you know, the big Vaishnava society. Yeah. We all heard how, how beneficial it is for us. Yeah. If we really want to have Krishna Prema, yeah. we must get that water. Yeah. So first time I came to Puri, and by the way, I did a third class as you <laughs> were saying, that it was a third class train. So I went to Puri mm -hmm. and straight to the well of Paramananda Puri. Ah. And at that time, some senior Vaishnavas, they say, you don't get a drop. You like drink, or, you know, as much as you can, and you just dose yourself with water. Immerse yourself. Immerse yourself. So we did that, <laughs> and, <laughs> and really. Sure. And then later on, I'm I'm hearing from Shri Guru Maharaj, and he's quoting Shri Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur, how should we bathe in the Radhakun? and yeah. that actually hit me. Yeah. But really, what kind of baiting is that? And like you were just mentioning, Ek Bindu Jagat Dubai, a drop. A particle of a drop of that well can actually give you Krishna Prema if you have that consciousness to receive. Yes. Not just baiting there, but thinking, what is this place? What is the mood of Paramananda Puri? What is his relationship to Mahaprabhu? How much love Mahaprabhu has? Considering all of that, if you acquire a little bit of a consciousness and with the bold head, folded hands, offering the Dandavas, taking a drop, then you may be. By the grace of the Lord. Guru Dev would say, become a fit receiver. Exactly. And one more thing, since in Chaitanya Charitamrita, we hear how Prabhupada gives uh, elaborate purpose. He's saying that according to Saraswati Thakur, mm -hmm. he's telling how to get there. Yes. So, it's yes. all from Saraswati Thakur right. and Prabhupada's translating it. Yes. Yeah, so Saraswati Thakur tells you which train to get on, every, which stop to get off exactly how to go to all these holy places. Because remember, he did it, and much of it with Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So he's taking notes. There you go. So he's saying you go down that road, and there's a police station. Oh, yeah, the police station. And I'm... there is the well. <laughs> it's I... still there, the police station. And what I remember, <laughs> one time I went there, and really it was still there, but just now they abandoned it, just before oh. this whole thing happened. And I'm standing there, I took some water from the well of Paramananda Puri, and I'm hearing Medanga, and I thought some devotee is there. So I went into one of the rooms, <laughs> and there was this policeman, an officer. Yeah. He was playing Medanga super sweetly and singing Hare Krishna Mahamantra. <laughs> and he's got a chill, like go dear chill. Yeah. <laughs> and I was astonished to see that. <laughs> but later on, the place was kind of abandoned. Last time I went with Maharaj. Yeah. Anyhow. These are the glories of Paramananda. Jai Paramananda Puri. Ki Jai. jai. And so, I want to. Yes. Ah, yes. No, no, please continue, Marsh. Yes. Chakra Tirtha. Want to go Chakra Tirtha. Okay. So, Maharaj, what we can do then from Paramananda Puri as well, we can come. Along that same road, as we come out from the well, turn left, out from the police station, turn left, <laughs> and continue straight down. Then we come to the opposite, the back left corner of the uh, Jagannath temple. We can give our obeisances to the dome, to the flag, to the chakra of the Jagannath temple. And 
Marge, if you wish, we can come just on a half a parikramer around it on our way uh, down to Chakra Tita. And while coming down there, we can today look up, look to the left up the road, which is the direction of Gundicha, which is, of course, going to be featured very much in the Rathiatra day. And then, Marge, we can come to the front of the Jagannath temple, pay our obeisances to Patita Pavan Jagannath, and then we'll continue along to the uh, seashore further north, as it were, and there we'll come to Chakra Tirtha. Yeah. So I think for this we need at least three Mahamantras, Maharaj. Uh, yes, a wise choice. <laughs> So we're told by Srila Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami Prabhu and Chaitanya Charitamritam in the Antya Leela that he says, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was always drowning in an ocean of separation from Krishna. He begins one chapter that way, saying, he's always drowning in an ocean of separation from Krishna. Wow. And toward the final pastimes, this is becoming more and more pronounced and you could say out of control. He can no longer maintain his composure. That's why he has to go more and more indoors in the Gangbir and the company of Srup and Ramananda. And he just can't be in the public anymore. Because sometimes finding him, we thought, at the Singhadwar, like the golden pumpkin or form where all the limbs entered inside. Chatak Parbat. Uh, um, and we, as we mentioned, the Jagannath Temple, if you take that as Dwarka, then outside, there are many gardens and each one is told to be some equivalent to one of the bonds or forests of Vrindavan. So regularly, he likes to go there with the devotees, like we're uh, trying and imagine them, like their visit, this is this part of Vrindavan. Then they will sing songs about that. Mahaprabhu will sing songs. They're singing and dancing. They're told they go to one place where it's like Rasa Leela. He starts imitating the Rasa Leela, Mahaprabhu, and singing and dancing. And then he's also giving some explanations. And happily, they go to these different uh, places. And then the devotees hopefully can bring Mahaprabhu back to his room. Then he will calm, be somewhat calm. Srup Ramananda say certain things, saying certain, then they can go, go Vinda outside and like that. But we're taught one evening out with the devotees on their little, uh, you know, like Vrindavan Parikrama party, going to these different places and that at, at the speed of mind, he vanished. It was so fast, no, uh, no one could understand what happened. One minute he's there with them singing, dancing, happily explaining, uh, and vanished. And then the devotees, remember, they're always in uh, a plane of anxiety. 
sometimes the Vaikuntha world, we'll say, oh, Vaikuntha means unlimited, or Kunta means anxiety, Vaikuntha without anxiety. Oh, yes, we aspire for that world that is free from it. This world is so full of anxiety. Janma mrityu vyadi, inescapable, anxiety, misery. We seek that world that is anxiety free. But Guru Maharaj said, that is Vaikuntha, that is the southern hemisphere of the spiritual world. In the upper hemisphere, the Aprakrita plane of Krishna, and like Maharaj said, two compartments, Krishna, Gorlila, filled with anxiety, right? nonstop anxiety. Yes, yeah, sort of like, oh, the milk is boiling over, you know, and that milk is from special cows. Like, she knows what that milk is in that pot. Put it, setting down Krishna to attend to that milk. The anxiety of seva. Bhakti Vinod Tagore says, I, I celebrate that. that. It is not a burden. Like there's that expression, the, a labor of love. The, this is the original labor of love and the anxiety that accompanies uh, service. So uh, the, the, the devotees, they're immediately filled with anxiety, which from one point of view you can say is intensifying their uh, premic emotions, and, but they're also, there's something that they're really, uh, dare not even contemplate. Like Haridas saying, is that, I think that time is, don't show me those past times, please let me fall down now before you. And they're saying, every time, when he vanishes, they're thinking, this could be it. It's not like they go, no, haven't you read the Chaitanya Charitamritam? It's not like that. Every time this happens, they're thinking they may never see him again, whom they can't live for without a moment. And so, but then they have certain places they always check, like the Singhadwar, Chatak Parvat, they divide into two groups. One's going to Chatak Parbat, and Swarup Damodar and his group, they're going along the ocean. Because sometimes he's going in the ocean, taking it to be Jamuna. He's jumping into that plane and we're told, being tossed around like a, 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 a piece of wood. Have you ever seen wood just like being thrown around by the, it goes underwater for some time, pops up, goes a little bit above, comes down again, a wave throws it far away, it's like that. That's how he's being tossed around by the waves of the ocean. And what does Kaviraj Goswami say in the beginning? He was always drowning in an ocean of separation from Krishna. That's his state, right? So sometimes literally jumping into the ocean, taking it to be the Jamuna and for hours on end, so submerged in the water, floating on the top, you know, in a death-like uh, state. So Srup Damodar and the others, they're searching along that beach with sea beach, with torches and Mahaprabhu very far away. Where is that? Uh, Konark, like toward the, this temple to the sun god. It's like, 15 miles outside of Jagannath Puri. Anyway, there's a fisherman, and we've seen them actually with our own eyes. They're, they they fish at night, have little lights on their boats. And um, so he, this fisherman, he goes out at night and because he's afraid of ghosts, he likes to chant Nasringa Mantra for some protection. And he, this one even this particular evening, he, he pulls his net in, and there's this a, a body apparently of some sort of human being looking body in his net, and he mistakenly touches the body. He's seeing any life there, 
And then he's like, then his whole body becomes like electrified and infused with Krishna Nam. He's now infused with Krishna Prem because he touched the divine form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but that he doesn't know. And so he's now madly chanting Krishna Nam and he thinks he's ghostly haunted. So I touched the dead body of a ghost, then the ghost entered me and now all I can do is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, you know. And he's saying, I'm losing my mind. You know, he goes to the, and he's saying, then what can I do? Oh, namaste, not a shring. And he's saying, when I chant the Nasringa mantra, the ghost gets more power. It doesn't drive the ghost away. The ghost is getting even more power. Oh, what is my fate? You know, he, so he's running, he's on the beach and Swip Damodar, they're coming with torches. They see this man and he's saying, don't go there. Don't, I'm warning you, don't go there. And they're like, what, what? Yeah. There's a ghost there, you know. And Swip Damodar like, oh. Swip Damodar says, I'm actually a qualified exorcist and I can free you. And, uh, so come. And Swift so Dhamma is like chanting some mantras, then slaps him three times. And they go, Are you better now? You know, <laughs> but I want you to take me there. That's not a ghost, actually. Please take me there. And then you know, the man who's now got his composure takes him there. And then the devotees are crying. And they're just so sad. They see, and the man said, See, there's some, I don't understand. All of his joints, they're separated by this much. This part, that part, this part, that. That's the form of what Mahabharata, covered in sand, his eyes turned upwards. Like we were uh, talking before that some, see, some of these things, they don't sound to us uh, visually uh, pleasing. Right? So why is it being described? It's telling you like the, the magnitude of the experience to give you a hint of that. Like I mentioned, if you have that Kadamba, like Nifa, Stava, King Jelka, all right, you see the, these are Kadamba flowers. So we're told sometimes what happens on Mahaprabhu's divine golden form like we know what boils are, right? They're not pretty, but put the kadamba flower back. Then we're told like, like there, you know, in Brazil, there's a tree called jabuticaba where the, the fruits come right out of the skin in the tree. So these boils like appearances on the divine form of Mahaprabhu, they look, it looks like kadamba flowers like this, all over his body, like it's covered with kadamba flowers of ecstatic symptoms, right? And you see how they're golden and also there's something oozing, but it's of divine aroma, quality, form, you know. And so that's one direction. Prabodhananda Saraswati Tagore speaks of this and, and Charitamritam mentions that but the ecstasy going in another direction. So, but one thing is the hairs standing on end, horripulation appearing like this. Beautiful golden hair, so sweet, like, like that. But he says, taking it and then and when it goes in another direction, another type of sentiment, suddenly it looks like his arms are covered with golden thorns. The thorn like is hard and fixed and stunned. Imagine that, like a divine form covered in golden thorns. And then in another direction, kadamba flowers. So what does it tell us? Intensity, a particular magnitude, an unparalleled magnitude of divine emotional intensity and ecstatic outcome, asta sattvika bikar. So Mahaprabhu, he, that is his condition. What is he and, and the water thinking? He's seeing um, uh, they're on the banks of Jamuna, Radha Kunda, these places. 
there's Radha and Krishna. They're playing, they're surrounded by Braja gopis. There's gopis on the shore bringing other gopis to and see these pastimes. He's saying, it's so beautiful. They're giving him some seva, make flower garlands. And he's so happy to be there. And we're told the sound of their ornaments is so beautiful. He's saying, it's the most beautiful sound he's ever heard. Like Chintamani, Charanabhushana, Mangananam, and what is that, you know, Kataganam, Natyagamanam, Priya, Bhangshi, Saki, Priya Saki of the Bhangshi, Priya Saki, his dear friend, the flute. But the sound of their ornaments, he's saying, is inconceivably beautiful. But right now, he's in this, uh, like, comatose, trance like state. So Srup Damodar and the devotees surrounding him, they begin to loudly chant Krishna Nam. They take off his wet clothes, clean off the sands, and you know, they're just they're pathetically crying for their heart. The Krishna Nam loudly, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And gradually Mahaprabhu's form reassembles. And then he's coming out of the deep internal state to the half internal, half external, to the external. And then he's looking up and saying, where am I? And then he, he starts crying and saying, it was so beautiful where I was. And the sound of their ornaments was inconceivably sweet. And then you all made some noise. And my beautiful dream broke. Oh, I'm so unhappy. Where is my Krishna? Where is Radha and Krishna? So Guru Maharaj said, he's saying, that, all right, it, who's chanting the Krishna Nam? Swarup Damodar and all these great, we know it's Shudha Nam, right? What did he say? You all made some noise and woke me from that plane. What have you, Kalahol, he said, that means noise. So Guru Maharaj gives two, in, and then when we're talking about these opposites, extremes, that, so one interpretation he's saying, so compared to the, the ankle bells on the lotus feet of the Braja Gopis, you know, that, the sweetness of that sound, the Krishna Nam of Srup Dhamadar and these other devotees was noise by comparison. That's one interpretation. Then Srila Guru Maharaj takes it in a completely opposite direction. He's saying, or, and with, you have to be able to hold these completely opposite interpretations at the same, simultaneously. It's like a chintya beda bed. He said, or we can take it, the power of Krishna Nam is so great that it was given preference over direct participation in Leela. That is original wealth conception from the lotus mouth of Srila Bhakti Rakak Sridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj. The power of Krishna Nam so great, given preference over direct participation in Leela. That cannot be conceived with a mundane mind. And this Guru Maharaj is extracting from these pastimes. <clears throat> Hare Krishna. And then they're taking Mahaprabhu back to the Mat, as Madhusudan Maharaj will now take us back to the Mat. Well, Maharaj, I think the holy name will take us back to the Mat, chanted yeah. by the <laughs> devotees of Gupta Govardhan. Yes, so let I us come back to the mat, and then tomorrow is the Gundicha Marjanam, and yes. it's all over the world, and devotees are cleansing the temples and cleansing their heart. And then yes. the next day, we're back, same time, same place, for the Rathyatra Day. Um, I yes. invite the devotees to, to attend for that, and we will get special view of this through your holiness, Maharaj. Remember about the cleaning that we're told, Mahaprabhu, no one was collecting more dirt than he. And 
he was watching how much each devotee was cleaning. And if someone he felt was not up to the mark, he would tell him about it and point to another devotee and say, look how he's doing. So you, you know, upgrade. But it's mentioned, but no one collected more than he. And they did it twice. Once to clean, and it's symbolic in the sense, once cleaning the gross things, and then they went back for a super fine cleaning. So it's saying, cleanse the heart of the gross desires, then cleanse of those uh, more subtle material things. Hare Krishna. Um, now, Hari Hari Nama Krishna Yadavaya Nama Hari Hari Nama Krishna Yadavaya Nama Yadavaya Madhavaya Keshavaya Nama Gopā Govinda Ram Sri Madhusudan Giridhari Gopinath Madana Mohan Sri Chaitanya Nityananda Sri Advaita Chandra Radhara Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jai Rupa Sanatan Bhatta Raguna Sri Jiva Gopala Bhatta Dasa Raguna Chai go chai kori charana bandhan Jaha hoi te vignanas avista puran Chai go chai jar mui taro Sabada Padarinu Mora Pantagran Sabada Padarinu Mora Pantagran Sabada Jabe Braje Koilova Radha Krishna Nitya Lila Kori Lopraka Anande Bolo Hari Baja Vindavan Sri Guru Vaishnava Pade Rama, 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 Rama,
ฮริดานามาชาร์จสุฮริดาสทากุรคีได้ฮริดาสทากุรคีได้ฮริดาสทากุรคีได้ฮริดาสทากุรคีได้ฮริดาสทากุรคีได้ฮริดาสทากุร
Nam coming out of a new place. Seva Rupa Devi in South Africa, Dandavat, Jai Sri Didi, Dandavat, Hare Krishna. Pardon me? Oh, in Italy, all right. Indumuki, Dandavat, Hare Krishna. Chandrakanti Didi, Dandavat. Maheshwari Didi, Dandavat. Subhashini Didi, Dandavat, Hare Krishna. And where, where? Ajay Krishna Prabhu, Sushmita Didi in China, Dandavat. Ajita Krishna Prabhu, Dandavat. Praneshri Didi, Dandavat. Krishna Kanta Didi, Dandavat. Aviram Prabhu, Dandavat. Purushottam Prabhu, Dandavat. We're uh, glorifying Purushottam yeah. Ketra. Hare Krishna. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh uh, yes. Yeah. My... <laughs> yes, Ram Sunder, I can hear you. Yes. 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 Hare Krishna. Good evening. Krishna bless you. Yeah, <laughs> 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 All right, anyone else? Oh, Nityananda Das is here, as is Sulakshana Didi. Tomorrow is Sulakshana's birthday, correct? Yes. Yeah. All right. So on a, such an auspicious day, Prapula Krishna Prabhu Dandavat, Dr. Jai Kumar Prabhu and Charabala Didi, Dandavat, Dandanjai Prabhu. Dandavat, Dandavat Maharaj. Dandavat. Hare Krishna. And... Uh, I think that's everyone, right? Yes. All right. Bancha Kabba Tribhya. Oh, Gurjit Arora in Kolkata. Hare Krishna. Bancha Kabba Tribhya Shta, Kripa Sindhu Veva Cha, Patita Nam Pavanevyo, Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha. And Damodar Das Dandavad. Hare Krishna.